Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Rat Krakenling Drake stack as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this is very similar to the Royal Science deck that we featured a couple months back where we try and combine Improbable Alliance with the Royal Science and a bunch of these draw two payoff cards. And now we've got a nice addition from Theros Beyond Death with Nadir Kraken, three mana for a 2-3 Kraken, saying whenever we draw a card, we can pay one. If we do, put a plus one plus one counter on a Kraken and make a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature token. So a Kraken alongside Alliance can give us a way to go wide with the deck. And we've got a bunch of ways to pump up our team. One of them is with Heraldic Banner, where we can name blue since both the tokens from Alliance and the one from the Kraken are blue. And uh, Crackling Drake is also a blue creature that we can attack with. And uh, that will pump up the team. Another way to boost up our team is with Castle Ambreth built into the mana base. So another nice way to deal extra damage when we're going wide. And the rest of the deck is very similar to our last iteration. The reason we're not playing more than two copies of Kraken is it is still pretty mana intensive. It's not necessarily great in multiples. So I think two copies is kind of the sweet spot. And it's also not a card we're going to play on turn three very often since it's better to play the Kraken and be able to put a counter on it and make a uh, tentacle token right away. So it's often like a turn four, turn five play where we can activate the ability right away to get some value even if they do answer the Kraken immediately. So taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got the full playset of Opt as a nice one mana cantrip. We also have the full playset of Shock as some nice cheap interaction. And we've got some more burn spells in the form of Scorching Dragonfire that can exile any creature or planeswalker that uh, it would finish off. And uh, yeah, the three damage combined with Shock or combined with the three damage from Pyromancer can also potentially help us deal with larger creatures. Then we've got the full playset of Thrill of Possibility to help us cycle through the deck. Since our last iteration we're playing a couple extra lands, but we've got additional copies of Thrill of Possibility to make up for it. So in the late game we can discard lands to make sure we keep finding action. And the ability to draw two cards at instant speed in the opponent's turn also means we can potentially trigger Improbable Alliance in the opponent's turn as well, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck. Two mana for an enchantment that says, whenever we draw our second card each turn, make a 1-1 blue fairy creature token with flying. So if we just cast a single cantrip in our turn, like an opt, or draw a card with the Royal Science, we already get to make a fairy token, since of course we've drawn a card for the turn. But then if we want to make a fairy token in the opponent's turn, we need to draw two cards. So that's where the Thrill of Possibility comes in handy, as well as Chemister's Insight or potentially multiple opts if we're sandbagging them. So Alliance is really the turn to play we want to make with this deck. And then at three mana, we've got a great way to enable Improbable Alliance turn after turn. And that is with our Planeswalker, the Royal Science. Three mana for a five loyalty Planeswalker, the plus one lets us draw a card and then discard. That's the mode we're going to use most often, just to enable Alliance and the Iron Crack Pyromancer. And of course now the Nadir Kraken as well. And then every now and then we might use a second plus ability to maybe target a Crackling Drake to get in for the final points of damage. And the minus eight is also not too difficult to reach and gives us a nice bit of card advantage as well. Then we've got the full playset of Iron Crack Pyromancer, which is a nice repeatable source of damage. And we can deal quite a bit of damage with it. It's also an 0 blocker, so it blocks well on the ground. And it doesn't have Defender, so we can even potentially attack with it if we've got a Castle Ambreth to pump it up. Since, of course, with a Banner we want to be naming blue and not red. And just a, a nice way to make sure that every Fairy token becomes an actual threat instead of just a 1-1. And also great with our new addition, the Kraken, which, of course, in our draw step, we can pay one to make a tentacle token. But every time we draw a card, we can pay one. So unlike cards like Alliance that are limited to making one fairy token per turn, the Kraken can potentially make multiple tentacles per turn, making it uh, go off a little bit faster. But of course, it's a creature, so there's more answers to it. And then we also have the full playset of Crackling Drake, which is a great curve topper for the deck. Draws a card when it enters the battlefield, so enables all our various synergies. And we've got plenty of instants and sorceries to fuel it, so it's usually going to attack for quite a bit of damage. And then two copies of Chemistry's Insight, which is kind of the bigger version of Thrill of Possibility, which uh, actually nuts us additional cards, and then we can jumpstart it too, maybe discarding an additional land in the late game. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward. We've got all the red-blue dual lands for Temple of Epiphany for Steam Vents. And then uh, the three copies of Castle Ambreth are maybe a little bit greedy since we, of course, would like our mountains to come into play untapped to enable these early shocks and other interaction. 
but it is so good with Improbable Alliance and Nadir Kraken that I'm willing to play three of them. And then we've got five mountains and eight islands, so an even split between blue and red. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Bit uh, low on interaction in the early turns, perhaps. So could suffer against aggro. I'm not in a hurry to cast a Thrill, since my hand's pretty good so far. I guess we could look for a second mountain and discard an island. And if this gets countered, we can resolve our Planeswalker, which is nice. This might get countered by Quench, all right. Yeah, I guess we can banner naming blue. And with the banner in play, I can uh, maybe cast an insight on of turn. So even though we need double red for Drake, I think the plan is still to name blue. Opponent's got their own canvassers. So some sort of is it control deck. Maybe they've got Chandra as their top end. So we could play Crackling Drake, we could play Taplan on Chemistry's end of turn. It seems better when the opponent has open mana, even though they can spend theirs on uh, Chemistry's as well. Just want to hit our land drops and then kind of pick our spot to resolve a threat. Negate gets the insights. Yeah, I'll just pass again. I've got a bunch of bad cards in hand here. The dragon fires and the shocks are presumably not great. Dragon fire can go face, unlike shock, but can maybe deal damage to planeswalkers. Narset, for instance, is a pretty good one against this. Alright, well, we uh, fought through a couple of counter spells. Is it time to play Crackling Drake or do we pass with Thrill of Possibility at the ready? Feels like it's time for Drake, even though it's probably not resolving. Gets quenched. Still happy to hit my land drops. Pyromancer is not super impressive if we don't have a card draw engine to go with it. And it's also not at its best against control decks. So I could Kraken, but then I won't be able to make it bigger in case they have like a 3 damage effect. So I think we wait. Opponent discarding Flame Sweep, which can actually be pretty effective against us. So I could Thrill now, or I could keep Thrill to go with the Kraken, so we can go Kraken, if they deal 3 damage to it, Thrill pay 1 to make it bigger. Still have a bunch of bad cards in hand though, so... We'll discard a Shock. And Alliance is a real card we want to find here, because that one's a bit more difficult for them to deal with. Kraken gets ionized. And then we do want to keep some amount of lands in hand to discard to the Alliance. So we finally resolved an enchantment. And Alliance plus Banner is a good combo. Also, it's going to get bounced. Well, we'll just try again. Resolves. And then probably play the land still and then discard the other one to the ability. So we'll activate it right away. 
to get the token. Which is a 2-1, so... Lines up favorably against the Brazen Borrower. Borrower bounces Alliance once again. Maybe this time they have a counterspell for it. I mean, they know about it, so it's not like I can really bait them into countering something else. They had the Ionize now. So you could play the Pyromancer and then still opt to get a bit of damage out of it. I think we'll just play Pyromancer and pass. And then if they flash in Brazen Borrower, I can still opt to kill it. So I might need to go full control for this to work, just in case. And now we've got another opt for next turn, maybe. Also, the Dragonfire can also tag a Brazen Borrower. Well, points on empty, but they do have a castle to help them scry, so we just need to find another improbable alliance or planeswalker. Crackling Drake would be great. Alright, hopefully that's the final Ionize. And we can resolve our spells, keep lands in hand in case of chemists and sights. Or uh, thrill possibility. So we're both top decking. They've got castle advantage. But we have fought our way through most of their counter spells at this point. And some of their removal spells are pretty ineffective. Castle, I can probably afford to play. Upkeep Scry with Castle. The reason why we're not playing the Blue Castle ourselves is because we already have all these Red Castles, which uh, potentially gives us some mana issues at the start of the game, so wanted to be a little bit more conservative. Let us plan for the trials ahead. Yeah, I'll play the Pyromancer now. Which can also attack with the castle, or if we pump it with the science. Ooh, Niv Mizzets. Well, we do get to answer it here next turn. But they will get to draw an extra card, most likely. So I can loot with the science, discard castle, deal three in and shock to finish it off. Crackling Drake's also pretty decent. Right, hopefully no counter spells. Deals one to our planeswalker. Nifm is it down, and we'll play Crackling Drake. Probably keep opt in hand for now. Alright, well, we've got a 10 powered Crackling Drake. Opponent could have their own. Bottom, bottom, that's promising. Lava Coil takes care of the Drake. Sure. And Lava Coil takes care of the Paramancer. Alright. Do I cast Opt now? I guess so. Thrill... I guess is fine if we draw another land here. So I probably Thrill before looting with uh, Planeswalker. And 
then thrill again. Just imagine having a Nadir Kraken in play at this stage. Ooh. And we can loot away a land. I enjoy the proper application of knowledge. Definitely could have tapped our mana a little bit differently here, but the game prioritizes keeping castles untapped. Didn't think we'll need to cast up right away. Opponent in desperation mode, trying to find answers. And yeah, has to concede, so I could ultimate science and attack with the Drake, and it's pretty much game over. So grindy game against is it control, but uh, yeah, is it Drakes and uh, Krakens came out on top. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and sure, we'll keep this. Could play it up turn one, could save it to go with our Paramancer. Probably okay to play turn one, given that we have Thrill as another way to enable the Pyromancer. Turn one in Gutter Bones. Good target for the Scorching Dragonfire, potentially. I think I'll take two just to see what uh, other creatures they might play. Red, black, so it's knights. And they probably have a black land paragon that they're gonna play end of turn. Alright, we'll dragon fire the gutter bones then. Paramancer can block the paragon. Hopefully they don't have a second one. And the crackling drake will be nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a stomp from Bone Crusher instead, fair enough. Hopefully they just play it. Or we might see a removal spell on Pyromancer. A Regisaur, I guess, could be a problem, and yep, there it is. Although double Pyromancer can deal with it. So I could still play the Drake this turn, hit them for three. And then next turn go Pyromancer into Thrill, and they won't see it coming, whereas if I play Pyromancer now, they can kind of plan around it. And just go face for now. Well, they can't Amber Cleave me quite yet. Turns out they did have Paragon, but maybe didn't want to play it since we had a good blocker for it. So I'll take seven. Spawn of Mayhem. All right, that's acceptable, I guess. So I can even thrill in the opponent's turn to trigger both Pyromancers. That way they still have to discard to the Regisaur. Think that's the plan. And next turn we can opt to get rid of the Spawn of Mayhem. So I do want to do this before they get a chance to attack in case of Embercleave. And then I guess Drake also does the trick here, so might as well keep that over opt. And then our Crackling Drake could also trade for the Spawn of Mayhem. Alright, so we're in great shape. Nadir Kraken also looking good, although still prioritize playing the Drake. And then uh, can take out the spawn of Mayhem, I suppose. Alliance is good too. Now they could still easily have Amber Cleave in hand, so we do have to be a little bit careful. So if they cleave this, I guess I want to have both Drakes on defense. And then I guess I'll play the Alliance at a cost of two life. And then next turn I could maybe activate Alliance to trigger double Pyromancer too. 
because if they go land cleave they'll have a five power double striker which I can still trade off with with my double drake and yeah opponent packs it in so iron crack pyromancer did not get answered and uh, yeah it kind of answered the opponent's entire board here even at instant speed all right we're on the play with a reasonable enough hands we've got the interaction just looking for kind of our engine cards I'll keep a drake it's hard to turn down a drake when we know we'll have the mana required to play it facing Temple of Deceit, so usually points towards a more controlling deck. Probably don't need a second Pyromancer, definitely not in this matchup. But Alliance would be a great pickup. So I'm probably okay playing Opts to give ourselves a chance of finding our Planeswalker or uh, Enchantment here. Another Drake. Well, I don't know for a fact that we're gonna have a fourth land, I guess. It's a little bit risky, but it is one of our better cards. So, I think I'll play it safe and bottom it. Alright. So we will have a Drake next turn. Pyromancer might get bounced by Teferi. It's gonna be another birth instead. Well, opponent could definitely have all sorts of sweepers, that's why finding some non-creature permanence could be useful. That being said, playing Drake is not too bad here, because I do want to start applying a little bit of pressure. Shatter the sky down. So we can go banner, name blue, and then thrill discarding either land or scorching dragon fire. Kenrith, the returned king. Well, I'm glad we kept our burn spells. Let's see if we can maybe thrill into something useful first. Pyromancer, although I won't be able to trigger the Pyromancer this turn since we've already drawn some extra cards. So I'll probably just uh, take it out of its misery right now. So I guess it could be some sort of Asper reanimator deck too, with uh, Kenrith as another way to reanimate some creatures, or they're just Asper control. Yeah, let's uh, still play our Planeswalker. I could also opt in and thrill to trigger Paramancer twice. I guess it's not bad. So we'll up now. And then thrill on the opponent's turn. Try and weave around a potential counter spell. It's gonna be a Lockmere Serpent instead. That's scary. Well, that could have uh, finished off our Planeswalker in one attack. Take seven, I guess. Playing our planeswalker maybe buys us a turn of uh, serpent attacks. 
or I can start with an opts. All right, Drake is nice. And there's a chance we could finish off the Serpent with Pyromancer, Shock and Dragonfire. Omen of the Sea, undoubtedly looking for an answer for the Crackling Drake. Bottoms both. Now I could also block the Serpent if we expect him to play a Sweeper here, that way we don't take 7. And I could still potentially burn him out with the Shock and Pyromancer. Or I could just take it and they might be dead if they don't have an answer for Drake. Yeah, I'll take it. If they kept the card on top with the Omen of the Sea, I would be more into maybe just trading. Alright, if they're tapped out, we could have it here. We've got just enough burn to kill both flyers and get in with a Drake. I guess... They can gain one with the Serpent, but the Drake will also grow by one, at least. Just gotta make sure we tap our mana correctly. Pumping the Drake with the second ability could also work. And a 12-powered Crackling Drake crackles its way to victory. Opponent can go up to 11. But it's not quite enough. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow, but we've got our Kraken, so we'll keep it. And hopefully we'll get to see it in action. Opponent on turn one Lobstruck Beasts. Fair enough. Can maybe Dragon fire the token so the beast doesn't attack. Alliance is a nice one too, probably gotta start there. And then uh, can play our Planeswalker next turn. They are Gruul, so gotta watch out for Amber Cleaves and uh, Questing Beast can also be quite powerful. They might end up killing my Planeswalker and me wanting another one. Clothes is also pretty effective against uh, us discarding a bunch of cards. Yep, yeah, there's the Questing Beast. Although I will be able to take it out next turn. You have the heart of a coward. So we can Shock plus Dragonfire. And we'll keep looting for now. Double shock also works. Keeps uh, dragon fire available. I guess I could take out Paradise Roots at once. 
Part of me wants to wait until beginning of combat, in case I have another questing beast in hand. Sure. And we'll start attacking with our token. Uses a land for mana. Spellbreaker with haste and trample. So I guess we'll take out the beast now. And we'll keep our planeswalker alive. Crackling Drake's a good one. Or I could Kraken and start growing it. It's also reasonable. Make it a 3-4 right away. Make a token. I guess I can dig that too. And then do we send a token? Yeah, I do want to eventually close out the game. Hopefully no Amber Cleaves or... Domri's Ambushes. It's gonna be Gallia instead. Alright. Clothis turns into a creature. I guess I regret not uh, keeping back an extra token now. Opponent sends everyone. So... Can chump... Eat the Spellbreaker and then take two. Yeah, I'll chump. And since we drew a land, I can definitely pay one to grow the Kraken. Play Crackling Drake. Probably don't have time for the insights. I enjoy the proper Pyromancer could be nice. And then what do we attack with? I guess I could send one token and then chump Clothus, chump beasts. And we've got good blocks on the other creatures. Fine. So we're basically on a third turn clock from Clothus. Need to end the game before uh, too long here. Bonecrusher Giant just played as a creature. Fair enough. They only have single reds, so they couldn't do both. And then we'll chum the beasts. Yeah, we'll keep paying. Kraken 5-6. And now I can go Pyromancer. Activate Royal Science, pay one for Kraken, and then discard lands. Could also go Lions plus Pyromancer and then just loot. Maybe that's the play. And take out Gallia or Bone Crusher. Probably Bone Crusher. Get aggressive with our flyers. Could also send Nadir Kraken, to be honest. Sure. Opponent takes it. 
So we fall to four. We've got four blockers. They don't have double red for cleave. Which is important. Not our lobster beasts. That's fine. Next turn I can just activate Castle Umbreth and pump all our tokens. And that should do it. So I can afford to take one down to three. Can pay, doesn't really matter. Just gonna activate Castle. Pump with uh, science. I guess I could have uh, given Nadir crack and trample for the style points. Oh well. And that should be just enough. Alright, sweet. Got to see Nadir Kraken in action here. Making some tokens, growing pretty large. So, yeah, if uh, the opponent can't remove it right away, if they're playing some sort of green deck, then uh, it does get out of hand pretty quickly. And once we're on empty, it also makes for a great mana sink. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Don't mind playing the opt turn 1, give ourselves the best chance of finding alliance on turn 2. Facing Temple of Enlightenment, so presumably blue-white control. Don't need another land at the moment. And yeah, there's alliance, perfect. That gives us a nice uh, repeatable source of creature tokens. And I'll take another one. It's no easy way for the control deck to deal with Alliance. They can bounce it with Teferi, but that's about it. I guess Banishing Light works too. Don't see a ton of these in control decks. Maybe a one or two off. So, I think I still prioritize resolving this over Drake, since there's easy ways for the opponent to deal with Drake but maybe not so much Alliance. And I don't think we need to keep up Scorching Dragonfire. Although it's probably worth it to life just to keep it uh, at the ready, just in case. Or just play the Mountain, I guess. Point is stuck on 3 mana. So no need to play this into an Absorb, just gonna Insight end of turn and make the opponent waste their mana. And this will still enable Alliance Arcanist Owl, alright, so I guess they're just an enchantment uh, artifact type deck, maybe a couple devotion synergies. Finds another Banishing Light, yeah, looks like uh, my alliances aren't long for this world after all. Well, let's make the most out of it while we can. So I can go Banner into Crackling Drake. And the next room we can dragon fire the owl. Pyromancer also a good answer for the owl. Owl attacks. I guess I'll block. Might just be a uh, sweeper incoming. Yep. Alright. It's okay. So, I could potentially make two tokens with the Alliance if we use both the Insight and the Thrill. And can I still play Banner as well? I'll be uh, one mana short, sadly. I suppose I could draw into a land. So I'll Insight first, and then if I draw a land I could still go Banner into Thrill. 
Yeah, looks good. And then the Thrill might discard... Scorching Dragonfire might discard the other Thrill. We'll see. Altar of the Pantheon. Okay. I'll discard the Dragonfire since Pyromancer kind of does the same. So we can attack for 6, could also pump with Castle to make it 8. It's not quite enough for lethal, but uh, we're getting there. So I don't want to play Pyromancer into another Shatter the Sky, so we'll just go Royal Science. Draw and discard. Discard another Science, I guess. Hit for 6. And I could pump with Castle and then still Thrill, it's probably fine. Opponent at 12, end of turn we can still Thrill, in case they wipe the board here. And I'm pretty sure we can beat a Dream Trawler. Alright, there's a board wipe. Glad we were able to keep our Alliance in play this time. Because if they had played the Banishing Light earlier, they could have made life a lot more difficult. So, guess the Opt can go. And then Crackling Drake looks reasonable, or we can go for the Pyromancer instead. I guess this at least draws a card with Shatter the Sky, so that's kind of nice. And then I can just pump my token instead, since I don't need to really keep looting. Activate Castle, attack for 6, and yeah, opponent just packs it in. Sweet. So sadly didn't get to see Nadir Kraken in action too much, but it is of course only a 2 off. It is a little bit slow, so it's not often the optimal play on turn 3, so that's why I'm not a fan of playing a ton of them, but uh, there's potential ways to maybe build around it a little bit better, although this seems like the best home for it that uh, I found at least. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.